Nerd Soul. Why are you a black man in love? <laughs> Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Black Together, A Walk in Her Shoes. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Lady Lisa. I'm joined by my sister cousin partner in crime, Madam Butterfly. Say hello. Peace, love, and light, everybody. All right, y'all, we are continuing um, with our series, Who's Loving You? This is part three, and it is titled, Who Do You Think You Are? Learning, Healing, and Finding You. So just to recap just a bit on parts one and two, which you can find in links below, uh, we talked about in part one, our standards of beauty, according to us as Black women, according to society, according to the world, etc. So that's what we covered in part one. And part two, we kind of dove in um, into what I would consider the subjugation, theft of, even perversion of our culture by others. So that's what we pretty much focused on. So really, um, kind of everything on the outside, you know, our style, our hair, even, you know, makeup, et cetera. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift um, to the inside for this. But as always, before we do, before we get started, this is a walk in her shoes. So what do we have in the shoe box today, Madam Butterfly? Today we have a, a brown Hirachi a Natural Soul by Naturalizer Grand Jeweler. Uh, I figured since we were talking about the inside and, mm-hmm. and getting back to the essence of us that we would want to uh, bring about a shoe that is natural. Well, what does that look like? Because I don't know why I, I imagined a moccasin. You know what? Um, it's very similar to the um, shoe that we, a shoe that we had back in the 80s. The, um, I don't I'm trying to, they came in white and I, I would always see them in white or brown. They were flats and they, and they had like, imagine uh, jellies in leather. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't think I do. And you just, you just slid your foot in it and it had all of these little, like, little leather strips that came together. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to send you the, the photo. Because when you see oh, it, you'll know have, exactly what I'm talking about. it have about. leather strips on the side? Yes. So on each side, it had leather strips. I think I know what you're talking about now. And then all across the toe, they were closed toe, but all across the toe, they were all, like, the different strips all across. Sort of like, um, sort of like woven on the yes. top. Yes. Okay. I got you. Yep. I yep. got you. I that's got how you. they looked. I was like, oh, okay, that's like old school. But yeah. Yeah. Yep. Got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's what we have today. So we are we're talking about us on the on the inside. Um. So we're going to, you know, I guess we'll start with this. Maybe. What do you think is the general opinion, view, stereotype um, of Black women's um, attitudes, personalities, character, et cetera? How do, you, how do you think, what do you think is the general view of us and us on the, on the inside? How do we come across? <laughs> Generally speaking, mm-hmm. loud aggressive, combative, um, angry, um, obnoxious, um, bully, Mm. um, That that it just sounds like everything that's coming to mind is 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 negative, and even like when I thought about strong, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm a strong black woman, mm-hmm. the things that we typically 
consider ourselves strong for is rooted in something negative yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. And so, yeah, generally speaking, I think that's the, that is the perception of the black woman is, is not really anything good. I would say, but masculine, the, 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 everything that you perceive as feminine, um, outside of, you know, cause we're not talking about like makeup and clothes and stuff yeah. like that. We're talking about inside everything that you would perceive as feminine would be the opposite of the way mm-hmm. that a black woman is perceived. Unfortunately, I, I have to agree with you. Um, the notes uh, I made are pretty similar. Um, you know, we're perceived as having bad attitudes, uncooperative with anyone, um, even each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> being over emotional, unbalanced. Mm-hmm. And honestly, once I made those notes, I was like, all of those are signs of insecurity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each one of those. And so I, I think that's how we, but honestly, I'm grappling with that. Um, and I, I guess we'll get into it more in the next, in the next question, but I'm grappling with that because I personally don't, I'm not friends with anyone who behaves that way. Right. And I don't try to think, do I personally even know anyone who behaves that way? Mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. so then it kind of goes into the, the next question is of, is this how the average everyday black woman really is or has social media media in general managed to lead us to manifest their portrayal of us mm. is, is have they taken bits and pieces of, of how we come across or um, have they taken the, the few, all right, let me back up. You know how you watched you know how you watch the news and and there's some emergency or something going on and you have the news crew and you see all of these different people walking down the street, briefcases, nice suits on and everything, but they managed to find the one brother (laughs) or the one sister. They got nowhere to go that day. (laughs) They just made their regular trip to the liquor store. (laughs) <laughs> with their little going outfit on <laughs> right they consist of house shoes right. and a plastic bag and that could be for a man or a woman <laughs> <laughs> and you sitting there going as soon as they start approaching them you start like all these people I just saw walking, that brother was going to work. He clearly was going to work. That sister was going to lunch, but no, you had to go and <laughs> to this brother, this is the over here. Right. <laughs> so it, it makes me wonder if, if media has taken those, those few, right. And said, this is y'all mm. and, and bombarded us with that in the media. And we've, uh, subconsciously fed off of that. And now we're kind of, you know what I mean? I, I don't know, because to me, it's become unclear. Mm-hmm. Being that I can't, I can't say on a regular basis, I meet these women that we're, we're reading about, we're seeing videos about, we're even seeing movies about, I, I don't meet these women on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. I don't, interact with these women as, as my friends. Um, I can't even really say that I can think of anyone. Well, (laughs) 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 not a lot. (laughs) So what, what is your opinion on that? Um, okay. Well, I definitely think that media plays, plays a role in it Mm -hmm. to perpetuate that. Um, But I do believe that there are a lot of women that display um, these characteristics. Now, it may not necessarily be 
you know, the larger number may not be necessarily to the full extreme. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely believe that there are variations of the things that we both mentioned that are prevalent mm -hmm. with black women, you know, and I think that the way that that's proven is just by um, how it has affected our relationships, you know, mm -hmm. in the in the dynamic with our black men. Gotcha. Um, so I think that there has to be there has to be some truth and relevance to it for it to be negatively impacting how we interact with our men. Um, but I do believe that that some of it is perpetuated. You know, you have to kind of continue to put that messaging out in order for it to, to stick with younger generations. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because at some point. People evolve and they learn that behaving this way is not beneficial. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So at some point, more and people, more and more people will start to learn that this is not the way you behave. And they would raise their child in a different way than maybe they were raised. So the newer generations have to be taught that this is us. Yeah. So that they can then model that behavior. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so to me, then the next question becomes, if that's, if that's where we are, right, and unfortunately, um, all of the things that we were both able to come up with it, to describe what the typical Black woman looks like, right, is negative, you know, even even when we say strong, because that came to mind, too, that has taken on a negative connotation mm -hmm. because strong, it, it's strong from the angle of aggressive right. and strength and aggression are not the same thing. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then when a woman says she's strong, it's in a confrontational way. It's not in a matter of fact kind of way. It's like, I'm strong. It's like, OK, all right. <laughs> you know, it's. I don't know. But so so then the question is, how do we how do we truly um, sit back and, and discover who we are, who we really are as individual women? You know, what our true character is, what our personality is, what our temperament is, you know, outside of um, what has been kind of put on us and what we have built to counter. Whatever is out there, um, because I feel like it has to be a way to get to a point of saying, this is who I truly am. This is my, my, my true character, my, you know, my true temperament. So the question is, how do we, how do we get there and be able to say, okay, now I see this is what I am. How do I evolve into what I really want to be right. and be at peace at that? What's, what's your opinion on how we get to that point as Black women? I think sometimes you just have to turn everything off and spend time with yourself. And a lot of times when there is um, pain and trauma um, and all these things, you know, these types of things present, we want to avoid mm -hmm. being by ourselves. Um, but that to me is where that's where the healing can begin. Because if you block out all of the outside noise, you can you can better become in tune with yourself yeah. and recognize, okay, what things are actually within me? What things are actually coming from me as far as what, what I like, what I don't like, what I need, you know, all of that versus what is on the outside. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I think, you know, imagery is very important, you know, it's it's a very powerful tool mm -hmm. you know what I mean if you you watch enough episodes of the Kardashians or you know love and hip-hop or whatever if you watch enough of those shows something in that is going to become a part of your psyche some mm -hmm. something you know what I mean and so <clears throat> blocking all of that out and really taking time to become aware of, of who you are um and and even blocking out other people as well. Because if you're trying to fi figure out who you are and what you need, you, you, can't, you can't really get that from somebody else. Right. You know? And so 
um, that that's just what what I what I feel. I, I know that a lot of healing came for me in my life just by um, spending time alone and really getting comfortable with that, getting comfortable with my own company. And mm-hmm. it it gave me an opportunity to really figure out um, who you know who I who I was. You know, because even if you know who you are at, I don't know, 16, 18, 21, whatever, as you get older, you change Mm -hmm. your thoughts, your opinions, your needs, everything changes. Um, And so if you're not constantly checking in with yourself, you know, five years time, you could be a completely different person and you have no clue. Yeah. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I agree with that. Um, but I just want to kind of go in further, you know, with when, cause I had to do the same thing. You know, I, I mean, I honestly believe for a lot of women, especially if you're in a place where it's like, you know, you get to a point of get being sick of you, you sick of your own <laughs> stuff. Yeah, that's kind of how I got, it's like, I'm sick of my own. I make me sick. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what is going on? Oh. <laughs> right so when you get to that place and you say okay I gotta spend time with me to figure out what's going on with me and I think that's honestly the key when you when you can get to a point and say it's coming from inside instead of looking at everything on the outside because the common denominator in all of your foolishness is you right right and when you finally get there I think that's a great place right but mm-hmm. you know that's where you start taking personal responsibility um, for your own emotions, your own behaviors, your own choices, your own standards or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can take an honest, um, you know, survey, if you will, of what has happened to you, you know, things that that have happened, even things that other people have done but not from a point of view of being a victim, but from a point of view of, I could have responded differently. Mm -hmm. I could have made different choices, Mm -hmm. could have walked away, you know, a year ago, I could have walked away yesterday. You know, however, you know, it's it's a point of, because um, taking responsibility is is a place of power in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you say this is what I could have done differently, this is what I'll do differently, you're not giving anyone else the power to control your emotions, to yes. control your choices, con- to control the outcome. Yes. Right. Some, some people think there's power in saying, well, they did it to me, so it's not on me at all. No, mm-hmm. because then you're always at someone else's, you know, control of, of how you, res- you know, respond and everything. No one should be able to control your emotions. Right. Um, that kind of thing. So I do, I do believe, you know, again, it's, it's taking time to be with yourself, taking um, responsibility and reflecting and saying, what could I have done differently? What, what will I do differently? Who mm-hmm. am I really? And is that what I want to be? Mm. You know, if you sit down and say, I am overly emotional, I do overreact to things that aren't really that big. Is that what I want to continue to do? Right. And if not, you know, make a conscious decision of I control me. I need to learn how to verbalize or learn how to walk away or whatever it is. It's about fi- finding alternatives, saying, OK, I'm at peace with this and OK with this. And if I'm not, what's the alternative? Right. <clears throat> you know, so it's, it's a lot of self-reflection. It's a lot of having internal conversations, Yes. you know, with yourself and for me with God. Cause yes. again, like, like I've said on here, he he's your creator. So you need to go back to the original manner, mm-hmm. you know, of, of who made you and how you work, how you're supposed to work, how yep. you're structured, what all these parts, where are the, all these parts supposed to go? Mm-hmm. What parts don't belong? Get, get them out of here. It's causing, it's causing operational error. Yes. You know, so mm-hmm. I think that's really where, where it is. And see, that's, that's an individual thing. And so with that being said, that can help us to get to know ourselves and adjust to what it is we, we want to be and should be 
but that's not going to necessarily fix how we're portrayed, at least not, not uh, for a long period of time as society adjusts by force right. or by choice, whichever it may be. We don't have control over that, but to a certain degree. Right. So, you know, of course that comes over time. There's always like this, this delayed reaction, if you will. Um, you know, when, when we change as a people, there's always a delayed reaction in terms of how we're portrayed, I, I believe. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think that comes in time. And I think we have to not be as concerned as how we are portrayed. Um, that shouldn't be as much of a concern as how we really are. Mm-hmm. Or what we put out there. Because we have to be responsible for what we put out there. Right. You know, and, and the reality is stereotypes most stereotypes come from a real place. Right. You know what I mean? It's not somebody wasn't just somebody wasn't just sitting in a room one day and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to put out there that black women are angry and aggressive and they go outside with a bonnet on and never saw that. You know, like it just came it just, oh, I've got an idea. Like, no, that's not what happened. Yeah. There were enough women out here with bonnets on. <laughs> acting while for it to become part of the perception. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so there, there's always going to be that group of people who just don't care and they're going to just do whatever they want. And there's, there's nothing that we can do about that. But for those who do care, you know, show up and show out because this is, this is part of the collective and it's not about, you know, making sure that others feel comfortable with our existence or anything like that. You know, I truly believe like when you, when you have your hair done and you know, you're, you got on a nice outfit and all of this kind of stuff, like you feel different. Your posture is different. You know what I mean? Then versus just putting on any old thing to take the garbage out or, or whatever. It's a, it's a totally different feeling and vibe why wouldn't you want to operate on a frequency where you feel your best why wouldn't you want to do things to make to ensure that you're always feeling your best yeah and see you know know, having said that it's like the two feet off of each other and that kind of honestly meshes together what we talked about before in uh, in terms of the outside and the inside the thing is you know and I've experienced this personally the two feet off of each other so if you're having a day um, for example, where you're just, you're just not feeling yourself. You know what I mean? You're just like, oh, yeah. I just feel blood today. Well, nine times out of 10, you're going to look kind of blood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, or you can have days when you feel that way. And then you say, well, let me fix myself up yes. and I'll feel better. Yes. And you kind of start to feel better, you know, yes. but I guess the, the key is which one is a habit. What do you make a habit of doing when you're feeling bad? Do you dress the way you feel or do you dress the way you want to feel? Mm. Because they can feed off of each other. And I mean, all of, all of that is, is, oh gosh, coming from a place of growth. Right. And so that's what we're really, really talking about. And, you know, as we're talking, I'm, I'm, you know, sitting here thinking, and I think, you know, of course, this is for Black women of all ages. Absolutely. But I'm going to be real. I feel like it's more or most important for older women who are still in a place where they're just not all together. They're still operating from a place of emotion, not logic. They're still operating from a place of not having personal standards, not having personal, you know, boundaries and limitations. They're being led by their emotions and having relationships that are back and forth and, you know, all these different things. If you're an older woman operating that way, what are we, what are we expecting the younger women to do? (sighs) What, 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 What are we expecting them to do? Where are they supposed to get any type of example, guidance, leadership? from right that's real so we as older women gotta get it together who older you better bite your tongue (laughs) (laughs) i'm not part of the older listen me you you (laughs) one two (laughs) us and 
and some of them too. Because <laughs> when you when you when you said older, like I was thinking my Angela and, and all of them. You know what I mean? Like I was talking, I was thinking about them. <laughs> older, not elder. <laughs> You have women who are older and then you have your elders. <laughs> All right. I'm just okay, saying, I well, ain't ready to go to Shoney's just yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, better take, you better use that discount. You better <laughs> let them send me an AARP card. I will go and, and get my 30 cent coffee from McDonald's. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I love me a discount. <laughs> no, more seasoned more you know wiser more seasoned if you will okay I can roll with that you know not salty but <laughs> <laughs> gotta know the difference <sighs> another show it needs to be be seasoned without being salty come on now <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a word right there. That's a word. That is a word. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so yeah, that that you know, that's my thought on that. Is you know, that's something that that all Black women, I think, need to sit down and, and really do is is reflect on that, and not because so much that oh my gosh, this is how other people see us and da da da. I mean, that's a thing, but it's more about you learning you and being comfortable and okay with yourself. Yeah. Because let's just, like I said earlier, all of those um, characteristics that we named in terms of, you know, how Black women are, are seen, unfortunately, leads to that comes off as you're just insecure. Yeah. Now, if you're not insecure, then we need to figure out why that's coming out. And, you know, if you are, why? You know, what, what's, what's really going on? Um, that's my thoughts. You you have any other thoughts on that? Um, well, one of the things that crossed my mind uh, was trauma. You know, um, trauma is is a big thing in uh, the black community, um, and our our young girls are not being uh, protected in the way that they should be. Um, that's not to say that there's a justification and behavior for that. Um, but still, nonetheless, um, it's something that does happen. And without uh, therapy, without uh, being in tune with what's going on with you, um, it can be very difficult to not operate from that space. So, um, yeah, I think that um, if, if, if you are operating from that space, which like you, you had said, you had, met, you had mentioned emotion. Um, so if you're operating from that uh, space of emotion and that emotion has, happens to be trauma, um, then that's going to come out in a more often than not, that's going to come out in ways that are negative as opposed to positive. Um, and <clears throat> it's just not, it doesn't, it doesn't serve, it doesn't serve you well, it doesn't serve the community well. And I just think that if we all as individuals operate on a higher frequency, um, it will change the vibration of the whole. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, yeah, we, we definitely, Black, black people as a whole, we need to, first of all, we need to be going to therapy. Mm. We need to be addressing our issues. Um, we need to stop holding in secrets, um, which can be toxic to our spirit. Um, we need to properly manage our anger. I think that our anger and rage is often misplaced yeah. and um it is um exercised on people that have nothing to do with the root cause of the anger mm. um and like those are those are some of the things that help to perpetuate the perception you know what i mean because that you know i don't believe that the anger or the rage or the aggression is illegitimate 
you know, it comes from a real place. Right. You know what I mean? It's just that it's, it's mismanaged. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think where therapy would be helpful to, Mm -hmm. you know, put that in its, in its proper place. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I I agree. And when we were talking about that just now, I was thinking about uh, um, (laughs) beyond the events and, you know, fix my life. Cause I've probably watched just about every episode that exists of that. Um, I know some people kind of make fun cause she can be a little dramatic sometimes, but it's a show. What do you want? Um, but I just, she just has a way of, I don't know, taking people and getting them to break down what exactly where their emotions are coming from really. Because, mm-hmm. you know, most shows she has somebody on there who's attacking someone else, brother, sister, mom, dad, whoever, like attack. That's what they've done their whole life. They've attacked just this particular person or just these particular people. And she'll get them to sit down and have all these conversations. She has all of these tools and methods, you know, to get them to figure out this is about what happened to you when you were six. This is about, you know, you're not feeling protected by this person or loved or accepted by that person. And it's like, to me, it's really uh, amazing, honestly, because she just has this way and this method of taking people through all of these steps to get them there. And of course, everybody isn't willing. Every, you know, some people fight every step of the way and, and what have you. But um <clears throat> It just, you know, it just kind of goes along with what you're talking about. It's like, it's just kind of misplaced emotion, misplaced, you know, anger, because you don't know how to go to that person or that source and express yourself, or you feel like you don't have a right to, maybe this is a parent, you know, or, or someone um, that you feel has authority over you. And how dare you go to them and say they did anything wrong, or maybe they've given you that, um, you know, they've kind of uh, communicated that to you in some kind of way that, you know, you can never say anything to me about anything that I do, you know, that kind of thing. So absolutely. And I'm glad that it seems that therapy is being normalized more and more um, for Black people. We talk about it, you know, more and more. You're, you know, I'll hear people say more often, kind of as a matter of fact, yeah, I go to therapy. Yeah, I've been to therapy or I've been doing therapy for this long. And so it's becoming more normalized as part of the conversation and part of, you know, kind of what you do and more and more people saying, yeah, you need to go to therapy. (laughs) You know, I'm going to therapy. You need to go to therapy. Um, It was something I was watching um, with black men and women having a conversation. And it was a um, a young black man who was like, you know, I've been in therapy the last eight years. And he just kind of said it, you know, and just kind of let it go at that because it, it was like, yeah. That's just kind of what I do and it is what it is and it helps me. So I think that's really important. I, and I think we're getting there. Um, and I think that's one positive, one, one, a few positive things about social media in terms of us is that we are able to kind of see these, have these conversations and see these conversations more and more um, between us as, as Black people and be able to kind of just discuss these issues and narratives and, um, you know, everybody, the problem with the internet is everybody has a platform, but the good thing about the internet is everybody has a platform, you know? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Um, so it can be counted, it can be balanced and, I don't, I, I don't know from, I guess it depends on what you choose to watch, but for me, it seems to be balancing out yeah. um, for the simple fact that I'm able to choose some things, some things are available to balance out the negative, mm. you know, shows um, that we, we've had some growth. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So we're not going to hold y'all, you know, that's, that's, pretty much what we had um to today so again today the focus was on you know looking within yourself learning who you are um developing who you are and being able to be at peace with who you are um and you know again as we both emphasize just taking that time to 
um, be with yourself and figure all those things out. You know, take an honest look at how in general we are perceived as black women. Right. And just say, you know what, if, if, if none of that pertains to you, great. Right. But if any of it does, then that means you need to kind of sit back and say, what can what can I do differently? Do I want to be anything differently? Am I cool with me? Am I completely cool and at peace with me? You know, and if, if the answer to that is yes, then that means you there's a sister that you can kind of help out. Mm-hmm. You know, right. And if the answer to that is no, you need to take some time. You know, um, we always have room to be better. We always have room to be better um, as as women, as black women um, and as a people. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to add to that when you said, Mm -hmm. you know, um, am I cool with me? Um, Because some people are cool with the bare minimum. So Mm -hmm. what I would add to that is. Is the way that you are serving you in the best way possible. You know what I mean? Because if you can be cool with who you are, but if it's not serving you Mm. to be how you are, meaning you're missing out on opportunities, meaning there's breakdowns in relationships, you know, all all of these different things are happening. You could still be cool with you. Yeah. But is it in your best interest to be cool with how you are at that particular time? Is it serving you the way that it needs to serve you? Or I shouldn't say the way that it needs to serve you, but is it serving your best interests? Mm. That's a good point. That's a good point. So we hope you all will receive this in love, everything that we've, we've said today. I think we did pretty good today. We didn't go hard on nobody or nothing today, right? <laughs> Not at all. And we're oh. while we're talking to them, we're talking to ourselves at the Girl. same time. Yes, so. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So um, as always, we hope you all will um, share your comments. We look forward to your comments so we can continue and have a conversation. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and most importantly, continue the conversation with someone else. We thank you all as always for, for listening. And we want to thank Nerd Soul as always for allowing us to be um, on this platform. Once again, the links to parts one and two will be below. Um, And again, thank you. Bye, y'all. Peace, love, and light, everybody.